Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best prize for their antiques and collectibles. You've got a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to make you a cash offer on the table today. 200 pounds. You've got your stern face on now. You were nice a minute ago. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, it's their own cash and they won't be parted from it very easily. There's an alternative. You can gamble and go to auction. That way, I think I may get you a little bit more money. Right. In the room then at 28. Today the show comes to you from Enfield. Local people have turned up in large numbers. You know why they're here. They want to gamble or take cash home in their pockets, but either way, they want the real deal. The dealer's den is filling up, so let's get cracking. First, we're on Henry Nichols' table. Madeline's brought in a pair of Victorian miniatures, and there's more to them than meets the eye. The two pictures that we're going to be looking at, yeah, I think I quite fancy those. I think they're quite nice. So, yeah, I'm going to have a pop at those, I think, and see what we can do. Lovely, lovely pair of pictures. Um, what do you know about them? Well, we've had them quite a long time. My husband, he he got them from an empty house. Okay. We've had them for over 50 years. Right. And uh, we've had them, we just had them up in our bedroom upstairs. And um, why are you getting rid of them? Well, I've got such a lot of stuff in my house. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, we'll start, and we've got to declutter, definitely. OK, let's take a look at what we've got. These are what we would know in the trade as being primitive pictures. They're quite naively painted in a way. I'll start with the lesser of the two, in my opinion, yeah. which is this rather dapper-looking gentleman here. Right. Okay. When you look at the, the, the way the hands have been painted and the whole way he's sitting, you can tell it's got that naivety, that primitiveness to it. Right. But then we come on to what I think is a really, really charming, lovely little picture. Yeah. And you think what you've got here is a mother and daughter. Yeah, that's what I but thought. But you haven't. Happen. No. Ah. Back in the 19th century, yeah. all children were dressed in effectively what looked like nightgowns, yeah. lace gowns. The difference being the boys always had blue sashes and ribbons and blue shoes, and the girls would have pink ones. Oh, right. So when you look at the overall picture here, you've got a very proud mother and a son and a charming young boy. Yeah. Oh. Now, we can see that there's a signature here just by her dress that looks like F.H. Hendon and it's dated 1852. You'd think that they're English, but I don't think they are. are they I think they're American. American? When you look at the furniture, this is typical sort of East Coast American, mid 19th century colonial furniture. I think what we need to do is get some money on the table and see if I can tempt you to part with them. Okay. Let's start. 50. One, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 370 pounds. Just a little bit more. Just I a think. Little, little bit, bit more. more. If I take that 20 away, and I put another red one down, we've got a 50 pound note there, makes it 400 pounds. Hi, David. You know, this business is very interesting because it's all in the eye of the beholder. My independent value as an auctioneer, with years and years of experience between them, are saying about a couple of hundred quid for the two pictures. I looked at them and thought, one in particular, this one is very, very commercial indeed. And Henry, I must give him his due, has put 400 quid down. I think they're worth every penny of 400 quid, and they could be worth a bit more. But I'd be very nervous to push you to a sale room, and so I'm going to bow my head to Henry and say, Henry, 
you know how to bid. It's a fair offer. They're worth every penny of that. They could be worth a bit more, but I'm saying give the lad a chance. Thank you, David. So 400's on the table, what do you think? No, that's a very fair deal. Have we got a deal? Yes. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Well, I was hoping I could get about 200, you know, and so I was really pleased to have got the amount. I got 400. I was really pleased. I'm delighted to own them because they're just such a really charming pair of paintings. So everyone's happy with that deal. Let's see if our next seller, T, can stir up some interest from Michael Hogburn. My next item is a set of silver and enamel spoons. The thing about these, they've got to be in perfect condition. If they are, I'll give a better price. My expectations are uh, triple figures. And with triple figures in mind, T gets straight to work on Hoggy. They look so pretty. Yeah. I think uh, Carl Fabergé would proud himself if he owned these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're quite a long way away from Fabergé, though, right. aren't they? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I am actually, because they're, they're Birmingham Allmark, 1947. Right. So and I don't think Fabergé worked in Birmingham. And you're right about the enamels, they've got some really nice enamel work on them, haven't they? And they're, they're silver and gilt, they're called, so they've got a gilt finish on them. When I had a good look at these ones, I didn't notice any damage on them, which is in their favour. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. They look like they've never been used. Where have they been? They've been in a lot for the last 12 years. Really? Really. Yeah. And where did you get them from? Um, a mate of mine brought him in yeah. to have value at a pawn shop. And he said to me, they offered him 25 quid. And I said to him, you know what, I'll give you 30 quid, they're so pretty. And that was 12 years ago. 12 years ago, that's about the right price for him. Are you a collector of anything or? Not really, no. You just sort of like pretty Cash. things? <laughs> Love it. I'm a collector of profit, okay. so we should go well together, shouldn't we? Okay, yeah, you be cash, I'll be profit. Okay. So don't begrudge me a profit when I make you an offer. Okay. Well, there you go. 10, 20, 30 quid. I'm, I'm shocked. How much do you realistically think they're worth? If they're about £150 each, that's 900 quid. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not... really bad. So 900 then? <laughs> yeah. You're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we'll be serious. All right, let's be serious. Uh, 40 quid. You can take the box for £40. <laughs> David, let me just say, he thinks they're worth 900 quid. No, they're not worth that. I can tell you now, they are enamel over silver, they are beautifully done, they're in perfect condition, but sadly, they're out of fashion. Right. 100 to 150, 80 to 120 is the area of estimation, but they're probably worth another 20 quid. Hmm. I'm going to get out of the way. I think they're in beautiful condition. Rockstar friends often still do that with their little finger, so he knows them. Right. OK, I've got 40 down there. I'm going to go 50. Mm. I'm done then. Really? If I get 70 quid, I'm going to make 15 yeah, quid. Absolutely mid. I'll make it 60. Just a little bit more than 60. Keep going. 60. Come no, on. that's it. No. Another 20. No, no, I can't. 60 or auction? I think I better take it to auction then. Are you sure? I think so. I, I wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you. Sixty quid was a great price. I don't think he'd get any better at auction on those, but I wish him luck. He's probably on the money, he's probably telling me the truth, but you know what, I've got a feeling they're worth a bit more. They're absolutely gorgeous. But what does today's auctioneer William Rouse think? They're very pretty and I think they're perfect, so they're not difficult things to sell at all. Let's head over to the sale room and find out who's right. I thought on the day, not a great price, but worth accepting. It's not enough money. I think the, the auctioneer probably can stir up a better price. OK. Hey, now. Now, are they going to sell? Because they've got to make £80. Interest in this lot. I'm bid £65. I'll take £70, £65, £70, £75. £75 pounds is all I'm bid for the coffee spoons. £80 in front of me. £80 here. At £80, 85 You were right. I had my doubts. You were right. In the middle of the room, then, 85 I'm going to sell them for 85 85 T, you were on the money. 
85 if it's just under 70 pounds with the commission so are you happy i'm happy i took the gamble i'm happy okay he took the gamble he's happy the duke was wrong on this occasion i would have grabbed the, the 60 quid but on the day you're going home with 70 pounds that is the real deal Next up, we're with Brenda Haller. Car salesman John's brought in a much-loved piece of Royal Ducks porcelain. But will he be able to drive this deal through? I'm a bit emotional about being here today, getting rid of something that's been in my family since new, handed down generation to generation. Oh, better treat him gently, Brenda. Are you a local boy? Brentwood in Essex. I thought you were somewhere around here. Yeah. So, we've got a bit of Royal Ducks. Yeah. Tell me how you got it, where you got it from. My mother's first husband, who died at the age of 41, it belonged to him. Right. And his father bought it new. I believe it was about 1902. I inherited it from my mother. My goodness, a long line of yeah. men owning this. I'm 70 next year. I've looked at this piece yeah. every day for as young, long as I can remember. So it's got to go to a good home? Yes. All right. We've got a piece which is um, early 20th century and it's a romantic piece with the lady she's looking down on her bow so it's a fabulous piece i'll get some money out john we'll see where we go but i've got a real feeling this is going to be really emotional yes i'm very I've sad to see this go i'm very on. very sad to see this go okay but it's, it's not gone to. yet no you're going to no, always change your mind no. let's try 50, one. Don't give me the evil eye, I haven't started. <laughs> 50, two. 50, 300. I think it's, mm. I think it's worth more. All right. I'm gonna go straight to it. So that's 400. That's 500 pounds. Now, for that 500, it'll take me a while, but I might sell it for 700. I don't know. It's worth more than that to me. Oh, David. Hello, David. One of the nicest pieces of Royal Ducks I've seen in 10 years. Now, our independent value is the same, five to 700 pounds. Yep. I think that's a cheap estimation on such a beautiful piece. Now, it's obvious to me that Brenda likes this, like I do, a dealer that's been around, respectfully I say that, Brenda. 35 years. <laughs> and knows a good thing when she sees one. Her eyes. Oh, David. She'll be keeping that. <laughs> Get 100 quid down. It's just a lunch for you, Brenda. Get it down, girl. I'm not like that. I don't go off and spend hundreds of pounds on lunch. Down the chippy. <laughs> John, what are we going to do? 600 pounds and we've got a deal. It's gone. Brenda's not one to change her mind, but John and the Duke aren't going to give up easily. Come on, Brenda, do get not, that purse not open! Doing it. Not doing it! Force that purse not open, Brenda! It, no. Can Brenda withstand the pressure? Find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Enfield. Before the break, John turned down Brenda's offer of £500 for his Royal Ducks porcelain. I think it's... I think it's worth more. But will she go any further? I want 600 That's what I want for it, and that'll go. I'll do 550 and I'm going against what I should be doing. 575 No, 550 and you've got a deal. 550 and you've got a deal, Mr Car Salesman. Now, Brenda, love, you know... Don't come smarming to you me. You know, darling, no, no, you no. want this piece of duck. I don't... Give oh. it 50 quid more, Brenda, get him. it bought. I want 600. Me, my darling. I said I would give him another 50 pounds. Yes. I've gone that far. I want six. But he's a car salesman. Look, the tactics it's, are coming no, out. No, it's six is worth six. Worth you know six. as well I do. Wanted six is lovely. Finished. What down. do you think, everyone? Is it worth 600 quid? Yes! Come on, Brenda. Do get that not purse not open. Doing it. Not doing it. Force that purse not open, doing Brenda. It. No. Listen to me. 550 and a donation of 50 pounds to cancer research. 
I have to walk away at that. I can't do any more than that. She's beaten me here. Thank I'm God. getting out of the way. Five fifty to you, and fifty pounds to cancer research. John. Lovely. That's good. That's have better. Worth deal? more to me going to a charity. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very, Thank very you much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So £50 goes to a charity close to Brenda's heart and John finds a safe home for his royal ducks. The price is OK. The charity, £50, just topped it. It's nice for it to see to go somewhere else. Very pleased. It isn't easy to part with a treasure, John, but it's in safe hands now. Debbie Serpel had better be prepared for her next item. It's a bronze figure of a Boy Scout. It's fantastically sculpted, there's no question about it. My only slight reservation about the piece is the subject matter. Lee, thanks for coming in on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Tell me about this little bronze. Well, about eight, probably ten years ago, I, I gave a friend of mine a fiver for a big old paint bucket full of second-hand radiator fittings and bits and pieces. And in the middle of it, there he was. I've had a good look at it and I didn't think it was worth anything because I couldn't find any markings or signatures I, or anything. I, I don't so, think he's worth anything either. You don't? No, no I mean, I, I think you were had on, I think you were had with the fiver. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, he's lovely, he's yeah. lovely. He's, um, he's a bronze. It is a shame that he isn't marked by yeah. whoever did him. But he's very definitely of his period. Um, I think probably um, the beginning of the last century. He's an interesting, interesting piece, and, and I would like to make you an offer on it. Okay. So, let's have a go. Fifty. Hundred. That's great because you only spent a fiver, and you wow. got and you got the the, the parts as well. Yeah. So you know you, you're in quids in, aren't you? <laughs> 150, 200, 250, 300 pounds for your bronze that cost you less than a fiver. Absolutely not. Am I getting near? You're about halfway there. Halfway? <laughs> yeah. He's got... Well, I don't see myself as halfway. You don't. Um, 350. So it's a no to 350, and here's David. <laughs> Thank goodness it's a no to 350. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is fabulous. Look at the stance. Wherever you look at it from, I defy you to turn around and say it isn't fabulous because it is fabulous. £4,600 is where our independent values are going. The Duke is saying, I think they could be wrong. Now, we may go to the sale and they may say, don't like it. You've still got the bronze. Yeah. But I've got a feeling that could easily be a thousand quid. I like it. Right, let's see if I can put some more money down. 400. 450, 500 pounds. How does that sound? It sounds very nice, <laughs> but no. It's my nemesis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How much on the table? Not enough. And I'll tell you what, I had a funny feeling about this from the beginning. That's why it's here. And I'm going to take your advice. And if you don't mind, I'm very sorry, but I'd love to take that to auction. Yeah. I think. Well, I, I, I tell you, I think you're doing the right thing. And the reason I say that, in my opinion, I think that would be 750, 850 of anybody's money. So I think you've done the right thing. Thank you. That's me out. I'm sorry I wasted your time. You haven't wasted my time. And good luck at auction, Lee. Thank you Thanks very, for very much. On. Thank, Thank you. you. I think he knows what he's talking about. He's really good advice. So we're off to auction. I think I paid, or I offered a fair price at 500. He may well do extremely well at auction. I hope for Lee's sake that he does. We hope Lee's gamble pays off too, Debbie. Go for 
If she'd have offered me five grand, I'd have still turned it down because I wanted to come here for the experience okay. of being here. Well, and, do you know, you I know. feel I feel a lot better about that. If <laughs> if it was five grand, you still would have turned it down. Yeah. Lot one forty-two is this bronze of a Boy Scout. Two fifty then to start me. Two fifty, two sixty, two seventy, two eighty, two ninety, two hundred and ninety pounds for the bo Boy Scout. Two ninety. Still only two hundred and ninety pounds. We really rated this. They're not rating it in the room. I'll take 300 if you like. At 290 pounds, 290. Sorry. Gamble has gone down at 290 pounds. I want your first reaction. What is your feeling? It, it reached more than I thought it would. Well, you've heard what Lee says. We, the experts, the so-called experts, were very enthusiastic. On the day, we've put it to the room here amongst professional dealers. They haven't agreed with us. So we, the experts, on this occasion, we were wrong. And we are bowing our head and acknowledging that. Our next seller, Mick, has brought along a Malacca walking cane, something Henry seems to know a thing or two about. They're good news if you've got them with the right top to them, maybe an ivory head um, or a really impressive silver top. I'm feeling, feeling pretty good. I have an idea in my head about the price of this. I'd buy it at the right price, but I wouldn't be worried if I lost it. Let's see if you boys can agree what the right price is. We have a walking cane. It's lovely, yeah. What do you know about it? Not much. OK. I had um, gout in my foot, and I was at a boot there, and I picked it out of a box, and I thought, it's lovely. So is it recently you got it, or...? Oh, no, I think I have quite a while. OK, and if we have a deal today, what are you going to do with the money? Loads of things, if you give me enough, but I ah. doubt if I get enough for what I'm going to do. Around the world, to Ireland, please. Yep. To a niece's wedding. OK. And you have to dig deep. <laughs> OK. Well, let's talk about this. Um, yeah. This is what we've got here. Obviously, it's a walking stick. The actual body of the walking stick is what we call malacca. Right. OK, and malacca is a type of cane. Yeah. OK. You can always tell malacca because it's got this very rich honey colour and it's not actually strictly round. And you can see here it's got a little bit of a ridge that runs down, which is typical sign of a malacca cane. Okay, you've got the original ferrule at the bottom there. Right. But what I like about it is that we've got the top is a Maori mask. On the back, we've got a mark. There is, yeah. Um, lion makers, and it's marked sterling. Because right. it's marked sterling, we know that it's not an English piece. The quality of the actual mask itself is quite good. It's not top quality, but the it's quite good. The eyes are nice. The eyes are nice, and they're qu probably quite likely to be gold plated. That's what I would think. Question is, what's it worth? The problem we've got is we've got a nasty split on the side, we've got some denting all round the back, and it's not quite sitting right on the top of the actual cane itself. Different dents give it a bit of character to it. That should be my line. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm selling it, that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still don't think it's worth fortunes, unfortunately for you, but we'll have a go. We'll put some money on the table. And see where we get. Well, I know it won't take me to Ireland for a week. A wedding lasts a week in Ireland. You might get an hour or two <laughs> in a pub. <laughs> OK, oh. let's have a look. What are we going to put down? 20, 30, 35 pounds. Am I a million miles away? Not a million. Excellent. OK, well, if I can put another fiver down and we go to 40 pounds, how's that? You have got to go another bit. Another bit? Yeah, a bit, an Irish man would say. <laughs> How about, would 45 quid clinch the deal? A pint of Guinness in Ireland is about six euro. So you want 50 quid for it? You'd give me another fiver and we'll shake hands on it. 50 quid it is, Mick. You got a deal. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you much, very Mick. much. I paid £2 for it, £48 profit. He's going to have a profit, I have a profit. Perfect job. Profits all round then, Mick. Coming up, two Cockney geezers go head to head. Can we do a deal? Put another score on there. Another score? Really? Welcome back. 
to Dickinson's Real Deal. Our next seller, June, has brought in a large Clarice Cliff bowl. I want the good price for it, and I hope Brenda's going to be very generous. Whether I accept my price, I'm not sure. Let's see how we go. We're watching closely, Brenda. How long have you had this? Uh, it was my mother's. Was it? Yes, um, I lost my mum two years ago. Uh huh. And um, she bought it at, at a fair. Oh, did she? Mm. So she she liked Clarice Cliff. Yes, and um, yeah. It's about forty years ago she oh, bought really? this. Yes. So she bought it fair. for a good price. Yes. So do you know much about Clarice Cliff? Only what I've seen on the television. Oh, and that. right, right, right. right. Uh, yes. Um, so you know she was an artist yes. that painted for the Wilkinson yes. factory. That's right. Um, it's on the bottom, yes. It is, yeah. right. Oh, yes, here it is, the Wilkinson factory, which yes. is here. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is the Fantastique it's range. Yes. It's a range, but it's called the melon design, not watermelon, melon. So talking of fruit... Yes. What did Mum put in there? Not fruit. Um, she stood a jug in there. I with know. flowers on it. I yeah. know. Yeah. How do I know? Well, because there's marks in there. There yeah. you go. I'm yeah. not just psychic, you no, see. No, no. There are marks. Yes. There are marks in here. Since I've had it, I've put a mat in there. Good girl. So, That's a lesson I to everybody. Did, yeah. Yeah. A lesson to everybody. All right. So if I put some money down, what do you think you might spend it on? Holiday. Oh, really? That much money? Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I better get started then. <laughs> right, um, let's go. One hundred pounds. I know. Two hundred pounds. You've got your stern face on now. You were nice a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> Two twenty. Mm, right, more than more that. More than that. Yeah. Two forty. Two sixty. A bit more than that. Just a bit more. What will I do? Two seventy. And we've got the expert on Clarice Cliff here. Well, I wouldn't say the expert on Clarice Cliff. Now, I came to see what is described as damage, but turns out to be a bit of wear from constant use and constant admiration. I can tell you that the offer on the table is a pretty decent offer. The independent valuers, they say two to three hundred. I personally thought that was low. So if you fancy a trip to the auction, I shall be there to help you. No guarantees. Not a bad price. I think she'll get a little bit more money because Brenda knows all about Clary's <laughs> Cliff. This is very true. <laughs> Don't let her kid you. She's been around for a long time in this game. She knows. Because you're a lovely lady, I'm going to give you another £10 and then we can decide. We just change that for that. It makes it £280. You can take the 280 or you can go on a date with David. Can't you put another £10 down? No. <laughs> I know you're like this, Brenda. I know. I don't often give extra, and I've given extra. We have got 280 on the table. Are we going to do a deal? No. Good girl. <laughs> Thank you. My mother bought this on a fair, and um, she only paid £10 for it. Wow. Clarice clear. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of profit in that. We'll see just how much later on. Across the room, Alfred's brought in something Hoggy can't wait to lay his hands on. Got a nice atmosphere that's got to come up, right up my street. Going to have a good go of buying it. I'm expecting two to three hundred. Better get that cash out, Hoggy. I love Jaeger Lakuta, but yeah. tell me, where did you get it from? I bought it off a mate of mine, and. Uh, about seven, about six, seven years ago. And have you had it in your house? Have you been using it? No, I've been, it's been in the cupboard all the time because I didn't know nothing about it. <laughs> Love it. You know it's an Atmos clock, don't you? Yeah, I know what it is, And yeah. do you know how it works? No, I don't know. Okay, well, it works on the atmosphere. 
Yeah. Hence the Atmos clock. Yeah. And Jaeger Lacoutre almost invented this technique of working. It's like a 400 day clock. Yeah. And you will not know if it's working or not. You see, I've it got. It was working when I first bought it. It's ringing bells to me, Alfred, because I'm thinking if this doesn't work, repairing it is one of the hardest things to repair in a clock. Oh, yeah. So let's have a look what we've got. We've got a four pillar glass. So you can see the movement. You can see the front here as well. Yeah. And it's clearly marked Jaeger Lacoutre. Yeah. And then you've got the Atmos, which is the clock. Yeah. When it is working, it sort of spins around a little bit, just backwards and forwards. Yeah. And it, it's just a really nice clock, yeah. you know. How much did you pay your mate for it? Do I have to tell you that? No, but I'd no, like well, to know. OK. Well, let's see if I can make you smile. 50, 100, 50, 200. 250. No, I want a bit more than that. But I don't know if it's working, Alfred, and I could have to spend another 200 quid on this. No, I want a bit more than that. Now, Alf, the Diamond Geezer, this is the guy that knows and has written the books about antiques of the future. Absolutely. And this is right up his street. Don't know. Two to three hundred pounds is the estimation. I also think it's 250, 300 quid's worth. But at the same time, he has got to repair it. If you can nick another 10 or 20 quid off him, Alf, yeah, I'm going to say that would make a very tasty deal. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Alf? Can we do a deal? Put another score on there. Another score? Really? Yeah. 10, 20. Have we got a deal now? Yes. Sure? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And how much did you pay for it? Two hundred pounds. Nice result. After the break, will they be needing earplugs on Debbie's table? You'll tell me when I give you far too much, won't you? <laughs> we'll <I> scream. <laughs> You'll scream. Oh, I like that. <laughs> It's been a busy day in Enfield and things are slowly winding down. Except on Debbie's table where the last deal is winding up. Elisabetta has high hopes for her item. I brought a, a gold Omega watch. It is 1973 and I'm hoping to get good value for it. It's 14 karat gold, so it's, uh, it's a good carat, it's a good name, but as a dealer, I would seriously be looking at it at scrap value, which is not little, you know, it's, it's good money. Tell me how you've come to have it. I bought that for my husband in 75, I would say, and he passed away five years ago. I'm sorry. And so I think, I was thinking to Move sell it on. and share the money in between. Between the family members? Yes. Well, when you bought it, Elizabeth, so did you buy it new or was it second hand when you bought it? I bought it from a chap who was in very much need of money. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, it is a gentleman's Amiga watch. And Amiga is, you know, from a watch point of view, is, is a good name. It has great movement inside it. Well, he never had any trouble with it. He no never way. did? No. So do you know whether it's still in working order? Yes. It is. That's, that's great. Yes. The only downside with it is, at the moment, I don't think it's a particularly fashionable piece. And dare I say, its scrap value is very high because it's 14 karat gold and it's heavy in weight. So let's put some money on the table Thank you. and um, you'll tell me when I give you far too much, won't you? <laughs> we'll <I> scream. <laughs> you'll scream. Oh, I like that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count out 100, 200, 300, 400. That's 500 pounds rather than put it down individually. Yes. That's our starter. Okay, how's that? You're not screaming yet. No, no. No. <laughs> now, Debbie, you're going to have to do better than that. OK. 550. 600. Oh, a bit more. A bit more. <laughs> 650. 
700 pounds. How does that sound? Uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. Right. 750. Is that a little bit more? Mmm. Got a big bag there, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a big bag, but I have children to feed. <laughs> right. I'm going to go one more. That's 800 pounds. And you go a bit higher. How many grandchildren have I you got? I've got five grandchildren. Cinque. 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 Cinque, si. Cinque. Cinque, Cinque. grandchildren. Si. Elizabeth. Hello, David. How are you? I'm fine. You keep me company every afternoon. <laughs> Do you know that? We are good friends. Every afternoon. Many years. We over meet. many years. We meet in the lounge. <laughs> OK. Let me tell you what our experts say. They say eight, nine hundred pounds. The scrap value, dare I use that word. The metal alone is a thousand and sixty. Will you give Elizabeth another 50 quid? It will still live, it will still leave you about 200 pounds in, dare we say, scrap metal prices of gold. Well, as you're with her every day of the week, David. Surely you're I'm not asking me to put the 50 <laughs> quid in. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm feeling as though I'm coming, I'm between a rock and a hard place here. So if I put another 50, is that going to make the two of you very well, happy? Well, I think if there was another 50, I would say to you, it is the same as going to the sale room and getting a gavel price of £1,000. So that's what I recommend. David, thank you for your advice. Thank you very much indeed. And love, I shall look forward to seeing you again. A colour go. Ciao, ciao, bambino. <laughs> See you next time. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so have we I didn't know you could tip that. <laughs> I think you did quite well there, actually. <laughs> right. So, Elizabeth, I put another 50 on the table. Have we got a deal? I will do it. Good. And for your cinque? Cinque bambini. Cinque bambino. They'd be very happy. They will I'm be. very happy. And, and I am happy. Thank you. Nice to have Thanks you. Thanks Thank you. I think it was a very fair deal. And the advice that uh, David Dickinson gave me, it was very important because he's the man that keeps me company every afternoon. It's a great time for her to sell. It's a great time for me to buy. I think both of us have done very well with that. Buenissimo. Elisabetta walks away happy. Our dealers have parted with nearly two and a half thousand pounds of their own hard-earned cash today. But with all that money spent, have they managed to turn themselves a profit? Well, it was a bit of a mixed bag. Brenda's purse was forced open and she reluctantly parted with a whopping £600 for the Royal Ducks porcelain. Come on, Brenda, get that purse open! She was right to put up a fight as the Royal Ducks is still waiting for a buyer. Come on, Brenda, what about the Claret Cliff Bowl? 280 on the table. Are we going to do a deal? Somebody passing her shop fell in love with it and she pocketed £300. Henry started off slowly. He paid £50 for the silver top cane, which he quickly sold on. But it was the Victorian miniatures he fell head over heels for. I'm delighted to own them because they're just such a really charming pair of paintings. He sold them to another dealer who was just as delighted with them. When Hoggy bought the Atmos clock from Alfred, he wasn't the only one with a profit in his sights. How much did you pay for it? 200 pounds. Nice result. Nice one, Alfred. And a collector snapped it off Hoggy for 360 pounds, making it a nice little earner for him too. But Elizabetta walks away with the best deal of the day. 850 pounds for her gold Amiga watch which Debbie's yet to sell. We've had a great day. A really good crowd of people. Bags of atmosphere, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.